Horror informs me that I made a bit of a mistake in my last Use Sky video. I, uh, I said twice about the Monte Carlo algorithm being used, but uh, apparently that was only so in Bryce 6.0, and Brian Wagner changed that to the median cut algorithm for Bryce 6.1. Now, probably that doesn't have a great deal of impact on the use of this feature for the majority of people, but I suppose it's worth getting right in case it does for, for for exporting purposes if you were expecting a certain result from one thing and it came out differently you might wonder why not not that i'm aware of what the difference is between these two algorithms but given they've got different names there must be a difference so uh we'll just go over the use sky feature again because there are some other minor points um, that uh, it might be worth being aware of i've just set up this simple scene and i'm going to save the present camera position I check in the Skylab and make sure that the Sun Moon shadows are set to 100 and that the Sky Dome colour, which you can see here or here, hold the Alt key down and click on the swatch, is set at zero and that the ambient is, is, is not affecting anything really. I've, I've just put one thing in the scene, this sphere, to, to show what influence ambient's having. This material doesn't have any ambient component and nothing else does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the sky with a particular pattern that will show some of the perhaps the limitations or advantages of uh, this particular use sky feature depending which way you look at it. So we're just looking at the sky and I've widened the camera view so we can see a fair portion of the sky and I'll save this in this camera dot there so we can switch between the two views quite easily. So back on the sky, in the sky lab, in the cloud cover lab, I'm going to edit this stratus cloud and, and with this button here I can go into the texture library and I'm going to go to basic and use this check blue function so there we go and in this preview you might be able to see that the squares have still got a sort of cloudy pattern and that appears to be a function of the sky. So now we've got these uh, quite sharp lines in the sky but a bit of a cloudy effect. The cloudy effect can be uh, removed by increasing the amplitude in this little graph. You can alter the frequency and the amplitude of the pattern and here with the cloud height we can lift the pattern up so we can see more of the checks. What I intend to do with this, oh as you can see the haze is lifted up as well, it's worth noting, but what I intend to do with this is uh, create a HDRI for the sky dome only from the sky. So use sky, make sure sky dome only is uh, selected there and just set it at its uh, default resolution which is quite low. And there you go, the, you didn't see the sky change but uh, you might have noticed the sun's now been disabled. If we, we can use this view just to have a look at the ground here and try and choose an appropriate level of light. The sun will have been captured in this HDRI, you can see it there because um, the sun was a visible object in the sky and it has some diffuse so you'd expect a strong shadow for the sun but some of the shadows arriving from this fairly bright sky. I check out of the sky lab and render the sky. You can see that this pattern is nice and sharp but what you're seeing here is the sky not the HDRI. If we go back into the sky lab and use the sky as a background and add it to the sky the sky will get a lot brighter but at this point we'll just turn the atmosphere off and set the atmosphere to fully black then you see what the HDRI background looks like so this is the HDRI you can see it's much lower resolution the sky so one of the key advantages of using the use sky option is you can have a very high resolution sky image and a small HDRI providing the light. If you use a externally generated HDRI to get a very crisp image you have to use a large um, HDRI and, and you know a large diameter and that in, in itself has a large memory footprint which ex makes your source file very large and can cause issues if you're using complex scene. So under most circumstances though, if we switch back to our main view here if you've just got reflective materials, uh, if they're on the objects and the objects are fairly uh, convex, then I'll just pick out an area there. The the low resolution of the image in, in reflection is not going to be a problem. 
and it becomes a problem if, like this infinite plane, we go to set it to, I uh, say, 15 reflection. At this point, it might now become aware that the the HDRI backdrop is of low resolution. You can see steps in the render. So if if you're in that situation, you can go back to the sky that generated your HDRI, remove it as a backdrop, and then you have the advantage of the lighting of the HDRI, which uh, set at its default level provides very good lighting, uh, and the and the the high resolution sky that generated it so it'll look as crisp as the sky that it was generated from. And you can see here because we have got a dominant light source that was captured into the HDRI that you have a distinct shadow and these um, these softer shadows around. If you wanted this shadow softening as before I recommend lowering the quality to 16 which is its lowest setting and increasing the softness and that will that will produce a softened shadow on that, but it'll also soften the shadows. This is uh, this main shadow is still part of the HDRI because the sun has been captured into it. The sun itself has been disabled. You can see the render time at about 20 minutes isn't too bad, and as I say, you have the advantage of having this uh, high resolution um, image of the sky that's being reflected, but the light source, which is low resolution, is not being shown. It's purely being used to generate the light that you're seeing in this scene. So that was uh, that's just something I wanted to make you aware of. Alternatively, you can use the uh, lower resolution of the backdrop to uh, create an effect. Uh, for example, we'll go back to generating the sky, and I'll use the hue sky feature, and I'll create, I don't know, I'll try, say, 2000, which is a little bit higher resolution. You see, it takes a little bit longer to generate the HDRI image. And then I'll use that as a backdrop, add it to the sky, check out, turn the atmosphere off, and then when I render that, we'll just look at a small portion of this, the, the softness of the actual HDRI image can uh, give the illusion then that we've got a bit of depth of field effect working in this, which would seem appropriate because this is still life. So you can use the lower resolution of the HDRI image uh, to your advantage to create different effects. So anyway, while editing this video, another thing occurred to me. The, uh, the, the HDRI being somewhat soft because of being a lower resolution, and uh, I thought, well, that could look like depth of field, or it could look like blurred reflection. Obviously that bit's going to be a bit sharp, but then I thought, but we've got something in the image based lighting tab, this specular map, and uh, the higher the exponent value we use to convert the HDRI, the the sharper the image will be. So the sharpest blurred specular map you can produce, and I don't know the details of this, I'm sure that Horro's got some uh, tutorials on this particular component, but I'm just looking at ways of using it uh, to create an effect in the scene. As you can see, it takes quite a while to process so it's got 25 percent there what I'll do is I'll pause the video and uh, and then we'll have a look what the effect of this is so the specular map then is even at its highest exponent quite considerably blurry we can't see uh, really any details in the reflection now on the ground of the grid but you can see a bit in the sky so that it's going to affect the reflections on the material it's also affected the light intensity in the scene so I'll increase the lighting a bit and we'll have a look how that looks in the scene when we render it with our soft shadows. So that's uh, yet another way of taking a sky, using it to, come to create a HDRI image and then furthermore using image based lighting uh, options to process that. So this is still somewhat a reflection of the sky but because it's been specular mapped it's softened to the point now where you can't pick out any details within it. Here then is the main disadvantage of using soft shadows in regular rendering mode. We've reached the AA pass and things have really slowed down because the soft shadow generation method creates a lot of noise and the AA pass then detects this noise and has to do a lot of processing to get rid of it so these gritty fuzzy edges need to be softened out and that's the anti-aliasing. This is the first setup with the sky 
so the sky that generated the HDRI visible but the HDRI doing the lighting this is the second setup and I want to draw your attention to these white spots here here and here and various here that there they're not a fault it's due to the fact that the Sun because it's a visible object and it has a diffuse output and it's been generated into the HDRI sky which is being shown as a backdrop is so much brighter that it shows up against the other things in the sky if you were to view the sky directly you wouldn't see it as being particularly bright but because it, the light's attenuated by the material which is only um, a grey colour then the, the whiteness of the brightness of the sun starts to show up in contrast to the rest of the sky so this is where these white spots have come from which are not very nice and finally the specular convolved at um, 100 um, what is, it? is that the Fong rating? I can't remember now what the but it was the value with 100 uh, is softened to the point where the sun has been blurred into what's around it and uh, and and although it's possible to pick it out as a highlight it's no longer the the distinct highlight that it was in the previous render so that's the end of the tutorial I hope you found that interesting and it'll lead you on to doing your own experiments with the use guide feature